So here we are with this Microsoft Surface Pro 3 running the brand new Windows 10 and this is my review and tips and tricks video for you. Once again, I'm Robert Ham. So let's check it out first. The Windows 10 has lost the schizophrenic nature of Windows 8 and 8.1. And by saying that, what I meant was uh, Windows 8 and 8.1 had this like odd tablet mode that brought up this modern UI user interface which looked really cool but you had to kind of decide were you going to use your computer as a tablet or were you going to use your computer as a desktop. So here, here we kind of see that again but it's in a much more re-envisioned way that works normally like what you might expect. So the nice part about Windows 10 is you have the option to use your full computer with access to everything in the tablet mode or the desktop mode and you don't really have to choose between each one and it's because they're really put together the same. So uh, in that vein let's go ahead and get started. So when we move back to our desktop, let's go ahead and close this down, there's a couple things that we're going to notice. Is one we've got on our taskbar down here, we've got Cortana and Cortana works very well. Uh, it's a speech input, she answers questions. Uh, when you tap on Cortana, you see that she pops up on the left-hand side and there are different icons. Now, you can expand these icons if you'd like to see what they actually mean or do, but uh, mostly you've got everything from home, which is just a nice place to ask questions and get some interesting related topics based on recent searches. You also have a notebook, which is the place that you have clipped things. Uh, you also have uh, reminders and then, of course, Oh, we're moving on to other devices like uh, Facebook and your f different feeds that you might have if you want to test uh, send things to different places. On the right hand side we have this action center. Now realistically this is just a notification center. It's, it's very much like Apple's notification shade. However, this actually brings a lot of functionality to a device that is supposed to be a tablet. Remember, the Surface Pro 3 is a touch device that acts like a tablet. It's incredibly thin, just nine millimeters. So it's really great holding one hand. So being able to hold the device and just have your, your notices pop in and out right there are great. Now also, when we look right down here, we've got some really great toggles and we can actually collapse those toggles just to the top four. You can then further customize this to whichever top four buttons you want in your full settings and personalization. Speaking of which, we'll just go over here to settings for a minute. When we tap on personalization, you can begin to see exactly what we're going to personalize, everything from the lock screen, the themes, the start menu, and the background. Taking a tour around the settings app is going to bring us into a couple of different icons that you're not used to seeing. And this hub is one of the great things that Microsoft brought to Windows 10 that puts all of your user accessible settings in one place very quickly. Now, can you get to things like, um, uh, you, you know, your control panel? Sure. You can go through connected devices. You can go through your Bluetooth. You can type, uh, go through your typing inputs and your autoplay. But what about if you wanted to get something more like, oh, I don't know, um, into your actual applications? Well, we can see this list here, which normally you would get through, get to through your control panel. And some might say, oh, well, how come we can't get to control panel? Well, the reality is that you can. Earlier, when we were talking about notifications and actions, these top buttons right here, these four, I'm just going to expand it, are these four right here. You can tap and change them to whatever you'd like them to change to, and then this area will change. You're also going to be able to select what icons will appear on the taskbar, and you can turn icons on and off as well. Applications and features are moving down here. This is going to be, uh, this is going to bring together, sorry, it looks like we came out of focus for a second. This will bring together all of your different apps uh, that you may, that basically uh, this is your device, not device manager, this is what your programs and features, just where you can uh, you know, turn them on and off. And install, uninstall, but you don't have to look at it this way. You can actually close this all up, come right over here, hold down on your start menu, just like you normally would, and then come over here and go into control panel. Boom. So now we're actually in our regular control panel. You'll notice too that the actual dithering of the screen has been changed. The font and screen re uh, font scaling has been updated so that it looks really, really nice. And this may be coming across in some kind of banding right now, guys. It looks like it might be, so uh, bear with me for a moment. But here you can still get into things like your devices and printers. So as we move on to devices and printers, you see you still have your entire network. 
uh, that you can access. You can still move into your default programs like we talked about just a moment ago or your device manager. Now, when you come over here into like a third tier uh, menu system, we're going from your desktop, from your systems to your control panel. We're in our third tier, our device manager. Windows, you got to come in here and clean this up. This text does not look as good as the other text. They, for whatever reason, the engineers that were redesigning the software screwed the pooch on this one. They forgot these menus. So when you get into things like system updates, well, not system updates, but system utilities, and you go to, into like BIOS in order to turn things on and off, if you get that deep into the computer uh, management side of it, we did it again, uh, then what will happen is uh, this screen doesn't look as nice. Uh, however, the, the actual box does, uh, the box, you know, the window itself. So there they go. Here's how you can still get in touch with your user accounts. Hey, does that look like anything familiar? When we go over here to user settings, now we click on user accounts. Maybe it didn't register. There you go. So this is this. And notice that multitasking. Look, to slide out from the left, and here we have user accounts from the settings menu, which is made to be a quick accessible menu. And now we've got user accounts from the control panel. Both of them do exactly the same thing. Uh, one of them just uh, is, is a more tablet interface. Uh, so the question is, why would we do that? Why would Microsoft, not we, but why would Microsoft do that? And the reality is to give people cross platform use um, you know what's going to happen is they're trying to get people to adopt this new Windows 10 and it's definitely a great operating system but they're going to be people that are used to doing what they have been doing uh, back from Windows XP which is accessing things through a very uh, manual kind of mode the reality is however for me that using Windows 10 in a desktop mode like this just isn't necessary I rather like the tablet mode, and let's move into it. So we have seen how we move and navigate around. Uh, you can uh, access files and things right there like you would. You can also come down here and access a file explorer, you know, so you can go to whatever uh, uh, folders you would want to go. Okay, great. So the point on this is to show you that this is a regular desktop like you're used to, and you've got a start menu like you're used to. Well. This is the start menu most people would be used to. I have mine expanded because I like the actual layout of the tablet start menu. I like this. And because I like this, you're going to notice that when I turn the tablet mode on, and there are no other other things going right now, when I turn the tablet mode on, it will automatically bring up what is the start menu. So here I am. This is my start menu. This is how I use the computer in a day-to-day -day operation. I very seldom do I go to my actual desktop. So this would be the desktop. I used bunny ears if you couldn't tell there. So what we have is still the ability to bring our recent locations and places up. We've got all of our apps. We can even grab an app and drag it right onto the screen over here if we want to. Uh, and we can come right in here and open up into our Photos app, which, by the way, guys, this is accessible in either the desktop mode or the tablet mode. But look at this app, man. Uh, the nice part about this is it looks clean and crisp. I can foresee quite a bit more integration with slideshow creation uh, and very much like the Apple Photos app now. Uh, and, and another review of this app will come along later. These are RAW files, guys, and these are Olympus RAW files. So Canon and Nikon have been supported for a while, but I shoot Olympus, I shoot Sony, I shoot Fuji, but mainly Olympus and Fuji. And so on the surface and other ver variants of Windows 8, I haven't been able to see RAW files. Just hadn't been. Uh, but Canon and Nikon, they've had simple raw file readers in there as well, so they have been able to. However, with the addition of Windows 10, they came out with a raw file reader native, so I don't have to open Lightroom or Photoshop or Camera Raw or PhotoMonkey or anything like that to view my raw images. So if i got a thousand images from a shoot, I can actually come over here and kind of preview them. So I like that a lot. But moving on over, just to kind of show you, we can look at our camera roll, you know, uh, or we can look at, uh, you know, our actual images. Notice again, in order to go to my task management, I swiped out from the left, or swiped in from the left. Here, you'll say nothing happens when I'm touching the start button right there, and that's not exactly true. It does. Let's come on over here, and now when we tap the start button, we see that it's just switching between different icons. If we then open up, let's say, this PC, 
hey, does that look familiar? This is a desktop class program right here. This is my PC. This is no tablet interface. This is the full uh, my PC, this PC. And it's right here. And I like that. So the point is now we can go back to our start menu. We can come back in and out. And it just goes through. It cycles through your last program opened. But swiping in from the left or right reveals both. Now, the nice part is, although I don't have the ability in most cases to um, show the app in anything other than its full screen mode. You can't, in, in the Photos app, show it in the half screen view or a windowed mode. It's just a full screen mode. The reason is because it's made to be viewed like this, but that doesn't change the fact that it can still snap. So if I wanted to, I can snap these um, items over here to the side. Let's make sure I got it going on, right? Should be able to just uh, snap it. Well, even some, ah, there we go. Bingo. So now I've snapped the items. You know, some of those cues on snapping, I'm, I'm, I never really use snapping very much. So uh, if I miss the mark on it, you know, uh, that's okay. But you got to just drag the top and pull it over. So anyways, my point is you're able to see that the computer is able to snap very easily. I can scroll. I can come over here and I can maneuver. I can whatever I want to do. I wondered if I just moved something around that I didn't want to move around. But it doesn't particularly matter to me right now. And we can then close. Once we do close and we come back over here, we can still move back in and close out the rest of the programs. So now the nice part is what about something like, oh, I want to use Lightroom. Do I have to be in some kind of fall desktop mode? Yeah, that's, that's what we've got to do, right? No, not at all. Lightroom loads right up just from the tablet mode like you would expect. And there we go. There's Lightroom. You want to look at your little guy right here? Boom. So now we should see a bigger one pop up. Maybe I didn't double tap him, right? There it is. Uh, and then zoom in. Ooh, ah, we got the Mad Hatter, guys. That's who this guy is. This guy is the Mad Hatter. Um, check my workout at roberthandphotography.com if you want to see any cool work. But that's my point right here. So what else is going on? Since we're here and we can customize this however we want, we can launch Edge, we can launch OneNote, we can copy and paste from one to the other. We can see our recent... Oh, look, I got a request for an event photographer. That's kind of cool. We can turn our tablet on and off using our sleep to shut down and restart. We can customize our menu. We can browse all of our programs. We can also open up Cortana. We can do our multitasking. Let's get rid of Cortana for a second. There is nothing to multitask because nothing's opened right now. And we can go back to desktop mode by just tapping off of that. Once we do, we're over there, and now you're back to desktop mode. So there you go. There's a quick down and dirty with several tips about how to go ahead and customize your device. If you want to make any of the customization to the start menu, hey, here's a pro tip, my last one, use it wisely. Click down here and tap on your taskbar, and then move into properties. When you do, you'll have the ability to customize the taskbar and how it actually operates. You can lock it, you can auto hide it, use small icons. You can change how it navigates. You can replace the command prompt, everything else that you would like to do. So once again, I'm Robert Ham with RobertHamPhotography.com. Catch me over on the Twitters at uh, Rob Ham Photo. Find me on YouTube and Facebook at forward slash Robert Ham Photography. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Cheers.